So an endpoint in a clinical trial is the way to um, tell if the trial is successful or not. Um, the main endpoint which we're using is survival, because if the patient is live or die, that is the most important point in doing the trial. However, now in myeloma that we have very good treatments, we need to uh, clarify uh, and wait a lot of years in order to see if the patient is dead or alive. So we need other endpoints to tell us, to foretell if they are in correlation to this survival endpoint. So we have response. Response, if the patient is in good response or in very good response or in an excellent response, that would correlate also with this endpoint of overall survival. If the disease returns, which is progression-free survival, usually it also will correlate with overall survival of the patients. And as we, the treatments are much better, then we get very good responses and very deep responses, so we can now measure uh, if there is a remnant of myeloma within the bone marrow to see one cell out of a million. And if the patients don't have even this one cell, maybe we are close to cure, maybe this will be correlating with a very prolonged overall survival of the patients. So we can get in a clinical trial that most patients have achieved this minimal residual disease, and this will also correlate with them surviving for a longer time. So a biomarker is a is, um, clinical uh, um, lab test, whatever it is, that will help us uh, in a surrogate way, if you'd like to, to um, say it, to assess this response. So if it's the free light chain or if it's the, the paraprotein, the immunofixation, the bone marrow with the MRD testing, as we were saying, these are all biomarkers that help us to assess the situation of the patient. Even the prognostic uh, markers, when we, we do the first bone marrow with the, with the cytogenetics, with the amount of plasma cells, with the beta-2 microglobulin levels and the uh, albumin levels, these are all biomarkers that help us assess at the current point of time what's going to happen with the patient a long time. So that's the basic idea. We can measure now minimal residual disease by various uh, methods. We have the method of uh, using a flow cytometry. This sees every cell and differentiates every cell from the other. So we can differentiate not only the plasma cells from other cells in the bone marrow, we can differentiate the sick plasma cells from all plasma cells. And therefore, if we don't see them, that means that there are no more sick cells within the marrow. Uh, another uh, method is to do it by what's called um, um, next generation sequencing. We can find a, a signature of the sick plasma cell and uh, we can amplify it. So if there are many cells, we will amplify it and see them. But if there are hardly any cells, we can try to amplify it and we won't see them. That is also meaning that there are very few cells within the bone or sick cells. And that is also correlating with minimal residual disease being negative. So um, at the current point of time, we don't know. We don't know if it's actually um, the nature of the disease and response to treatment. So the, the, the patient has good prognosis and therefore he has a negative MRD. Or should we aim for this MRD by adding more treatment? But, and the future of clinical trials are trying to answer this question.